Hello everyone, I'm just going to go through hopefully a very quick video to show you on how to deal with uh, some kind of high level data presentation um, with some data sets that I've got. The easiest way to kind of go through this is just to imagine the scenario that your boss has come over to you and, and he needs to know or she needs to know on how many uh, customers that they've got with uh, certain products uh, so I've called them uh, for my example product one and product two and I've got a list of um, customers who've ordered a line now uh, professional CRM packages will have this kind of functionality uh, built in but you might not have that you might just have a, uh, a running spreadsheet with rows of data you know going on to the tens of thousands of lines uh, just kind of uh, keeping a track of how many products have been sold per customer. Now the quickest and crudest way I've I've always done this and at the moment no one's ever said do anything otherwise but basically what I can do is I just take the the customer column and then paste it in remove duplicates and that'll give me the all the list of the customers that I've got. I've only got uh, A through to E, which is fine. You could have a customer list of going through uh, from one to a hundred, two hundred thousand customers. But again, uh, this is what I'm dealing with for the example. But the same will apply to much, much more. Now, to get the total amount of uh, products that uh, customer A is uh, taken, uh, I use the count if statement. And basically, with this, I can um, select my range, select the criteria that I want, which is for A, and then on off we go. Now, with that, that's quite nice because I can show that uh, customer A has 324 units, customer B 334, etc., etc., etc. However, then I need to then split it by product now again if you've got multiple products this is quite handy uh, and if you want to split it down this way you can then do exactly the same exercise as before so I'll remove duplicates okay I've got three unique values one is the obviously product title so we'll get rid of that now with that all I would then do is copy it and transpose it and take that out Obviously, with your side, it, you might have uh, a number of products going, you know, one through to hundred. You never know, but that's a good way of uh, keeping the data set all all contained because there's actually nothing worse than, for example, you might have one line that says one, even though it's product one numerical versus that. When you do this next exercise, which I'll show you, it'll oh, it just messes up. It's just not right. You need to keep your data in a, a constructed manner. So. Without no further ado, we use the sum product function within Excel, and this is where we can actually compare two sets of criteria to be able to give us the split that we want. So I want to know for customer A the um, the amount of products number one and number two that they've got. So with this, all I do is I select the array that I want. I want it to equal the customer A. Then I close the bracket and then open the bracket but put a multiplication sign in between then I select the product uh, equals number one and there we have it 260 now as a as a habit if I've ever got a data range that I need to keep uh, consistent I lock it up if I'm doing anything like this and the reason being is when you drag this across and you don't do it, it tends to um, start to fail. I also I know that my range for my customer, because it's um, horizontal, that needs to stay the same as well. So I lock that down. So with this, oh, also uh, just another thing is I need to keep the row the same for the top part, not the bottom. So if I then drag this down, that should. And if I drag this across, I 
it pretty actually make a bit of a hash of this. Um, so that's fine. It's fine. 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 Okay. And and there you go. That kind of gives you the the totals that your boss would want and the split. So. It might be made, I don't know, for an example, a decision that, you know, we've got uh, you know, a big problem with uh, product number two, and who's the biggest customer that it's going to affect? Well, with that one, quite easily, it's going to be customer B. Um, just as a another area, I purposely left, I, I did this on purpose, uh, so it would show zero values. Now, showing this kind of data is all, all nice. I mean, I'll just do a quick... Um, tidy up um, just so it stands out slightly better because when you start uh, getting into doing these more and more often people will be expecting better and better things now oops now there's nothing worse than looking looking at that because it, it puts your eyes to it now Excel has a lovely little function which is not as well broadcast as I would think and you can actually get rid of those zeros by typing this in so you do zero colon hyphen colon colon and then the at symbol and there you go those zeros are now removed and, and in doing that it, if there's nothing there there's nothing to worry about that's the probably easiest way you can think of it um, and there you go so that's uh, kind of giving you an example of how to use some of the count if statements and some products to give you a high level overview of uh, data okay uh, well hope you've enjoyed if you've got any comments by all means let me know